So hi everyone. So our first speaker for this session is Rukmini De. She will be talking about uh, Bayesian time type quantization and pullback coherent states on event dimensional manifolds. So, uh, thank you so much. I'd like to thank the organizers for putting up such a nice symposium. And uh, it's a pleasure to talk here. So, and it's a little bit intimidating to talk in front of physicists, but you know, let's try. So, uh, so uh, I'll be talking of, about Bayesian type quantization of even dimensional manifolds. And mainly I'll be talking about CPN because that's going to be our model. Okay, so first, the first part is just going to be about CPN. So first, let me uh, tell a little bit about our motivation. So some quantum systems do not come from quantization of classical systems because uh, you know classical systems are expected to have symplectic structure, but you know in nature there are uh, systems which do not have uh, symplectic structure and yet can be quantized. A very good example is spin. There is no classical theory of spin, but there is a semi-classical limit of the quantum system. So we want to include such systems which do not have symplectic structure or in even a group action, but um, it is a semi-classical limit of some quantum system as certain parameter goes to zero, H cross. So, and how do we do this? We just consider manifolds which have no symplectic or Poisson structure, but we induce the local structure on the manifold by embedding parts of it into CPN or CN. We'll embed parts of it in CPN if you expect a finite dimensional Hilbert space, we will uh, put it into C CN if, it, if you expect an infinite dimensional Hilbert space, okay? And we will induce the Bayesian quantization from these two spaces. So this is joint work with Kohinoor Ghosh. We have written a couple of papers on this. Uh, this is about pullback coherent states and squeeze states, uh, which was in Sigma, and this one is still in, uh, okay. Okay, here we go, okay. So I'll just uh, review quickly the Bayesian quantization of CPN because that's going to be our model. So uh, in Bayesian's original paper, CPN has been quantized, but uh, uh, it has been thought of as a um, homogeneous scalar manifold. So there's a group action which moves things around. We don't take that point of view. We think of it as a symplectic manifold. And as you know, the CPN is given by homogeneous coordinates W0 to Wn. And if you, and supposing you, you are on a patch where W0 is not zero, then you can take mu i to be Wi by W0 and uh, this patch is like one mu one till mu n, and uh, u zero is like mu one till mu n. Uh, so uh, u zero is uh, uh, homeomorphic to cn. Okay, and there's the Fubini study uh, uh, Keller form. Oh, by the way, the geometric quantization, uh, like Fubini study Keller form, is proportional to the curvature of the hyperplane bundle, which is dual to the universal bundle. And this is the Fubini study Keller form. And the Keller, Keller metric is related to the Keller, uh, Keller, sorry, Keller form, sorry, I meant Keller potential. So the uh, metric is related to the Keller potential in this way, and this is the Fubini study form, and from that you can construct the Poisson bracket. This is the uh, inverse of the um, uh, uh, component coefficients of the uh, Fubini study symplectic structure. Okay. So, now on this space, you just leave out all those points, mu dot nu bar is equal to minus one, and you can define this thing. And this, this can be, so later on we'll come to this because this, this is going to be uh, called our reproducing kernel. So now this is very important. Let h cross is one over m be a parameter. m, we are going to think of it as a integer and h cross is one over m, m is going to go to infinity as h cross goes to zero, okay? And in this, uh, so my uh, 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 hyperplane bundle is h on CPN, whose uh, uh, curvature is proportional to the Fubini study metric. And this is the local Keller potential, m times that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take tensor product, MF tensor product of the hyperplane bundle. And the uh, uh, sections are 
sections can be described very nicely. They are homogeneous polynomials of degree up to uh, m in n variables. Okay. So, and the form, the um, CPN, the volume form, we define it like this. And, uh, and uh, so, I, I'll skip this part, though this is very important for us, these calculations. But you can define these polynomials with a normalization. Everything involves M, which is, remember, 1 over H cross. And so the sections are actually nothing but uh, psi q1 till qm, uh, q, psi q1 till qn q, where q1 till qn sum is equal to q and q goes from 0 to n. These are the sections which are going to form my Hilbert space, okay, orthonormal basis. And uh, the inner product is this. Uh, notice that there is a e to the minus m times the Keller potential, and there is a cm in front. Okay, and you can define the Ronsley type coherent states using this orthonormal basis like this. So sum over all such states, you evaluate it at mu, and this one is evaluated at mu. This is psi mu nu. This is by the by the way called the reproducing kernel. Okay, in in mathematics, in physics. They are called the coherent state mu evaluated at mu, right? So this is one way of writing the coherent states. Okay, so we will write it like this. And so it has very nice properties, resolution of identity, reproducing kernel property, and so on, okay? I'm skipping all this a bit because time is a little limited. And LM mu mu bar, I'm going to denote it as L mu mu bar and uh, LM mu nu bar as, sorry, psi mu mu bar, and this is psi nu nu, okay? And uh, the inner product is this, remember, where dv was the volume form on the CPN. And you can define now, if you have a, uh, the Hilbert space is made out of homogeneous polynomials, as we mentioned, uh, and uh, uh, so uh, uh, you can, think of bounded linear operators acting on H, and this is the symbol. A mu, a nu mu bar is inner product of A hat in the coherent states, the expectation value of the A hat in the coherent states, and divide by the norm, okay? And what you can show is, from this A, you can get back your A hat by this formula. And also another, very interesting fact is you can define a star product using this very uh, long uh, formula. And what is this? This is the symbol of A1 hat composed with A2 hat. So let me go through this one more time. The symbol is just the uh, expectation value of A hat in the coherent states divided by this. And uh, A, hat, A hat F can be recovered from A. And the star product is defined like this. And what is the star product? It is the symbol of A1 hat composed with A2 hat. Okay. And uh, so you, you see the star product, everything here involves H cross. Okay, because M was there in everywhere, even the Hilbert space. Okay, so one, uh, one beautiful thing we were able to show is psi mu mu is one plus mu dot nu bar to the power M. Okay, and using this fact, we are able to show this beautiful property of the star product that limit m goes to infinity, that means h cross goes to zero. A1 star A2 mu mu bar is A1 mu mu bar A2 mu mu bar. So in the limit, the star product becomes the ordinary product. And the commutator, A1 star A2 minus A2 star A1, m times that is I times the Poisson bracket induced by the Fubini's two bracket. Okay. So this is the correspondence principle. Okay, now how do we, uh, what do we do? We are going to take that as the, the quantization, Brazen quantization of CPN as our model. And what we are going to do is, uh, so, so you have a two dimensional manifold and what we are going to do is we are going to leave out some measure zero set 
embedded in CPN and induce the local Poisson structure and the quantization from CPN. And if you expect the Hilbert space to be actually infinite dimensional, then instead of CPN, you embed it in CN and uh, induce it from CN. Okay, CPN is actually almost like CN, except it's compact and uh, I mean, in many senses, it mimics uh, CN. So, but the Hilbert space here is finite dimensional, where, whereas the Hilbert space here is infinite dimensional. Uh, Rukmi, you have two minutes. Two minutes, okay. So uh, anyway, this is basically the idea. One beautiful fact I just wanted to mention that, uh, okay, so, uh, so, uh, sorry. So basically I'll just say it in words. If you have a manifold and if supposing it's a, a compact, so just let's take it to be compact for the time being, there is something called the cell decomposition. That means you can leave out a set of measure at most two D minus one, okay? And the rest of it just happens to be homeomorphic to R2D. The last, cell you attach is homeomorphic to R2D. This is called cell decomposition. So if you remove a set of uh, measure zero of dimension at most 2D minus one, then you can embed the rest into CPD and borrow the quantization from, uh, yeah, CPD and you can borrow the quantization from there. That's one of the ideas. And for uh, compact even manifolds, you can do a little better, but right now I don't have time, but uh, the, the, uh, uh, the idea is the same. So you, again, you remove, I mean, you will be in for compact, um, the complex manifolds, the situation is a little better. You will be able to construct this, uh, induce this uh, Berezin quantizations patch by patch and glue them up. But again, you may have to remove some sets of measure zero. That's all, but you know what those sets are, okay? So that is the idea. And the examples we are trying to see is uh, if certain physical phenomena like of bohm effect or Berry's phase can be described in this method. And then we do the same for odd dimensional manifolds, but Berezin's lemma, which was the main thing which we applied, that one has to be a little careful because it doesn't apply straight away. And there are applications in non-commutative geometry and harmonic analysis. And finally, I'll just say a few words about the references. So there are many, many, if anybody is interested, you can take a look. There are many, many, a uh, lot of work on this area, in this area, okay. And, um, and this is intimately connected with coherent states. So, okay, so that's all I had to say. Okay, so let's thank Rukmini.